travel and things in association with Sun Destinations, iconic destinations with amazing experience, presents In Conversation With. I am your host, David Batsoffin, and my guest today is the author of this brand new Field Guide to Scorpions of South Africa, published by Strake Publishing. That's Ian Engelbrecht. Ian, good day. Welcome to you. Thanks, David. Thanks for having me on. It's it's only a pleasure. I have to tell you up front, I am, am scared of these sort of creepies. And you've not picked just one, um, which is the scorpions. You also have a passion for spiders. Why? <laughs> um, gosh, yeah. So um, these are just interests that I've had uh, since a very young child. Mm. And, um, you know, sort of um, developed and nurtured them through the years, went on to study zoology at university and, and just kept going with it. Um, and I think uh, as with anything, you know, once you get to um, know these animals a little bit better, know them a little bit um, closer, um, you'll, you, you get to learn just how fascinating they are and, um, you know, get, you get past the fears and, and appreciate them as they are. I love it when when somebody posts pictures of a scorpion or a spider and they go, can somebody ID this? And somebody will always come back and go, not medically relevant. And I'm, I'm sure there are more that are medically relevant, but the majority seem not to, it'll say like a bee sting or something like that. And yes. I suppose with, with the exception of the Buthidae, um, who are going to do you a great deal of harm, the rest are, are relatively, can I say, harmless or yes. not as life-threatening? Yes, that's right. Um, so the book includes uh, what, what we've nicknamed the hot chili scale. It's a little <laughs> um, graphic that shows um, from, from green to red. Um, uh, where is it? It's on the other side. Page. There we go. Yeah, that's it. Is. Yeah. So that, um, so that shows more or less how um, how dangerous that species is to human beings. And um, and someone mentioned to me the other day that they were just paging through the book very quickly and they could see how most of the species are right down on the green uh, end of that scale. Right. Which, you know, that means that they're not um, particularly potent, potent at all. Um, we've only got about three or four species of scorpions in South Africa which um, which can be considered uh, medically important, um, in, you know, in that they would um, cause very serious symptoms if they stung you, and um, and they do cause deaths. We we do have deaths from scorpion stings in South Africa. Um, thankfully, it's not very many. Uh, you know, it's only sort of a handful. I would say less than five um, deaths from stings every year. Uh, sadly, it um, typically happens in children, um, mm -hmm. obviously, because they're smaller and so they're uh, more vulnerable. The, the ratio of venom to body size is greater, so it has more significant effects. Um, and it happens in areas where, um, you know, where, where there aren't sort of sufficient medical services and, um, you know, the kids can't get to hospital in time and they can't get the adequate treatment and all of that kind of thing. Um, but scorpions are really not as bad as most people think, you know, people think that, the, you know, like any scorpion is dangerous, they freak out when they see one. Um, the irony being that once you've seen a scorpion, it's very unlikely to still sting you, you know. Yeah, like, uh, it's going to run uh, off. It's, it's more <laughs> yes. scared of you than you are of it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It will run off or you will run off um, one of the two um and um and yeah so so people are, are typically being stung when they don't know the scorpion mm. is there you know they're treading on it by accident at night without knowing about it um you know or it's getting into a bed or it's getting into a shoe or something like that um and uh, and in the major the vast majority of cases that sting is painful um you know you have nothing more significant than that the pain maybe lasts an hour or two um and then you get on with your day now, is the old age small uh, pincers, big tail, and small tail, big pincers? Does that work? I mean, if you if you find one and it does have the the latter, in other words, um, big pincers and a small stinger, it's less likely to do you damage than the other way around. Yes, yes, that works. That works pretty well. So, um, if you've got a scorpion with really big pincers and a slender tail. Uh, then you know you're looking at something that you don't have to worry about. 
Um, with the scorpions, with the small pincers and the thick tail, you know, those are the buthids, those are the venomous ones that you do mm. need to keep an eye out for. Um, the size of the scorpion is also important. So, so the ones that are dangerous are the really big ones with the really big, thick <laughs> granular tails. Um, those are the guys that you have to look out for. They're um, like the it, velociraptors of the of the scorpion world. They can they can yes. open doors with their with their pincers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you have to you have to watch out for those guys. If you see a small thick tail scorpion, um, you know something that's sort of the size of one um, you know digit on mm. your on your finger or something like that. You know that's really not going to be something that you have to worry about, even okay. if it does have a thick tail. Um, we've actually got a little, a tiny little scorpion species that occurs in the Northern Cape, um, which has an incredibly thick tail. It's, it's, it's got these, these very large polished bead-like tail segments. Mm. And, um, but it's so tiny that it can't actually get its okay. sting through your skin. So right. obviously it's quite like harmless. It's like supposedly daddy long leg spiders are incredibly venomous, but because their mouth parts are so teeny tiny, they can't bite us. So they can bite their prey, and that's about it. But no, well, the... that's that's a fallacy as well. Ah, okay. Just... <laughs> that's why Daddy I brought it up. <laughs> Daddy long legs are perfectly capable of biting people, um, and I know people that have been bitten, but they really? are com okay. harmless. Yes. Now the the other thing, of course, is the old blue light. Um, yes. Those of us who, re who remember going to discos in the sixties and seventies have your teeth glow <laughs> white in the dark. Yes. Why is it, Ian, that scorpions glow in the dark and the entire insect glows? It yes, has yes, has the are. reason been discovered yet, or is it still one of those mysteries that we need a whole CSI program on? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, it is. It is something of a of a mystery. So yeah, so just to um, just to describe what happens is that when you shine an ultraviolet light like that, a, bl a blue light or a black light. Um, onto a scorpion, the whole scorpion lights up this sort of turquoise green color. Um, it's absolutely remarkable. It's a great uh, party trick. Um, but also, if you're if 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 you're going out on a camping trip or a hiking trip or something like that, it's a great thing for people to do. You you take the UV light with you, and you can go scouting around your camp. Um, in you know just after dark, and make sure that there aren't any scorpions lurking around. Um, and, and good fun as well, just to kind of see the scorpions walking around. Um, but we don't know what the reason is. Um, we know what the what the compounds are in the scorpion's skin that make mm -hmm. it glow. Um, and uh, there have been several kinds of uh, several theories that have been put forward as to why scorpions do this. Um, one of the problems, so so some of the theories are that, you know, there's is enough light, enough ultraviolet light bouncing around at night, you know, coming off the moon or whatever that um, enables uh, scorpions to glow very, very dimly at a level that nothing else can see, oh, okay. um, but that they can see each other, you know, and they, that many of them have got these nice big sort of median eyes raised up on a tubercle kind of looking sideways, which, you know, might support something like that. But, um, and there are other theories as well about sort of sensitivity to light in their, in their cuticle, but so, sort of similar to how we can feel sunlight on our mm. skin if we mm. go out in the okay. sunlight. Um, but, um, but yeah, the, the, there's, so, so I, I don't think any of these are actually, that, that have actually hit the nail on the head yet. I, I think we're still looking for the reason. Um, and, and part of my thinking about that is that scorpions that, occur in caves and, and mm. there are several scorpion species that occur in different parts of the world um, which are completely cave dwelling they've lost their eyes entirely um, they've lost all the pigment in their cuticle they've got these like really elongated legs and pincers for living in caves and um, and they glow just as brightly as any other <laughs> scorpions so then just, yeah so <laughs> just, when, just when we think we're top of the food chain something like that comes along and just skews everything that we know i i've never seen a scorpion glow in the dark until i was at a, a camp recently and one of the the guards said to me oh have you seen the scorpions and i went ah, what scorpion in no scorpions <laughs> he said come let me show you something and it was a yes. tented camp and he he said where have you just come from and i said no I just I've just brushed my teeth. And he went, let's go back there. And let me yeah. show you where the scorpions were 
while you were brushing your teeth. Yes, yes. And the whole bench, the whole ablution area literally lit up. Yes. And it's fascinating. It really and truly is. Now, yes. this book, I see you say scorpions have been around for 420 million years. So they're up there with, with crocodiles and those type of things that have also been around for, for millions of years. Um, straight nature, again, come to the party with the most beautiful, beautiful book. But now I hear, I have it on good authority, that you took all the images in this book. Yes. So if you did, oh, stop being so modest. If you did, <laughs> how long did the book take you to produce? Oh, gosh, I was discussing this with a friend the other night, and he he actually reminded me just of, of just how long it's taken. <laughs> so, um, I think um, so. So we started, I started working on this book quite seriously in about 2013. Uh, the idea was born in 2010. And, um, and I started sort of experimenting with different ways to take photos. Um, one of the things that I really wanted to do was get that nice sort of gray background image. Mm. So neutral background, standard lighting, um, so that people can compare the different species really nicely one to the other. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, those are them. And um, uh, so in 2013, the project started. Um, admittedly, I, I was busy with other things. So I also do research on um, baboon spiders and trapdoor spiders. Um, and I did my PhD in that time as well. Um, but I'd say probably the last five years have been sort of pretty much um, going, not, not full time, but a lot of effort putting put, going into this book. Lots of field trips, um, you know, visiting all the different places in the country, trying to you know, get the male and the female <laughs> and, you know, um, the females not being so, um, so compliant, you know. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to say you scorpion sexist. But now, yeah. how, with, with that in mind, you say about the gray background, did you have to go into the field with like tons of equipment and, and strobe lighting and be lying on the ground in some sort of weird position to get these things in a place that you wanted them? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, photographing scorpions is not that easy. So, um, so I was carrying equipment around. I've got this set up with these um, mixing bowls that are painted on the inside with um, <laughs> white reflective road paint, um, multiple flashes, which I set up under these bowls. And um, it's, it's a completely cumbersome and impractical uh, setup. Um, so, so the scorpions would be fetched on the mountainside and brought back to the vehicle um, to be photographed and then taken back up the mountainside again. Because <laughs> uh, I have um, visions of you setting up all of this with a scorpion in front of you. And the moment you want to push the, the shutter, the scorpion decides oh, to move on. Oh, so many times. I can't tell you how many times. And, it, you know, sometimes you sit with a scorpion for an hour trying to get it to sit still um, for that photo. All right, so now this, according to this uh, field guide of, of um, to scorpions of South Africa, is this the definitive work? Or did you, once you'd finished this book and Strake had published, somebody got hold of you and said, <clears throat> Ian, there is a scorpion sort of just outside of Puff Adar that doesn't feature in your book. <laughs> did you not know about it? <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so so that hasn't happened, thankfully. But sure. um, we we do so. So the book covers all of the described species in okay. South Africa. So um, it covers the a, a fair chunk of the diversity of scorpions that we have. Um, but that said, um, there are still many scorpion species out there which aren't actually described yet. Um, so they have actually been discovered, but we're still mm. waiting for them to be described formally given names and and that sort of thing um and and there are also we're discovering new species um all the time so um i discovered um multiple new species while i was going out and um and doing the work for this uh, for this book unfortunately that kind of stuff can't go into a popular field guide the species do need to be sort of scientifically named and um and all the rest um i have However, in the book indicated where where the described species might be confused with those new species oh, okay. and said how you can tell them apart. 
Um, but um, yeah, I think probably, um, you know, in about five years time or so, mm -hmm. um, the book will be due for an update. Because um, you like like the, the Cecil Bird books, everybody's got yes. at least one, if not like me, I've got all five of them because yes. they keep changing. <laughs> but, but I just have visions yes. of, you know, in birding, there's always the common house sparrow or a bird that has the word common in front of it. And I feel very sorry for those birds because why are they common? Be because birds are special. They can fly, we can't. So we should be common <laughs> homo, homo sapiens rather than just homo sapiens. But now that, that's the same work. You say the scorpions have to be described before you can add them to a book. So there's some scorpion that you find under a rock and he goes, hi, my name's Bob. And you go, mm -mm, you haven't been described. I can't take it. I can't take your photograph. And the poor guy's going, oh, come on, man. You can use it in your yeah. next book. And you go, no, yes. I'll have to come back at a later stage when when you have a scientific name and and all of that. So yes. where, who does that, Ian? Are you able to do that? I know that you've discovered new species. I also know that you have a species of spider named after you. Yes, yes. Which must be, so what is it called? The, the spider. <laughs> Let Brifty eye. Lepthercus Engelbrechti is the name. There you go. Rolls off the tongue. Rolls <laughs> but, <laughs> I say that every morning when I wake up. My wife still doesn't understand. Yes. <laughs> Yes, so um, so I do, um, up, up until now, most of my sort of uh, scientific uh, work has been done on spiders. Mm. Um, so specifically on baboon spiders and trapdoor spiders. My, my PhD was on trapdoor spiders. Um, trapdoor spiders are interesting from a conservation perspective because um, they're sensitive to just, you know, you, if you plow an area or build on an area, they're not going to be any trapdoor spiders left. Mm. And um, and a lot of them have got quite specific habitat requirements and they're very poorly known. You know, we've got incredible diversity of trapdoor spiders um, in South Africa, but, but but because they're so hard to find, you know, they live in these little holes in the ground and mm. they make a little lid. On they're that fascinating. Hole, is... we, we were doing a walk in KZN and yes. our guard said, stop. Yes. There is something very closer than you know near you yes. and and it is beautiful they look like they've been marine varnished the yes, species yes. that we found it was That's absolutely right. stunning it really and truly yes. was yes yeah no they're incredible things um so so yeah so that so the process is that a um a taxonomist someone who's um you know appropriately qualified and experienced and knowledgeable um, needs to describe the species and you know these descriptions are extensive you know it's mm. not just you know brown scorpion with yellow legs you know it's um you know it's got four spines on the right foot on the right third foot and five spines on the right fourth foot you know like yeah very very intense uh, descriptions yes yeah um and it takes time to do that so um hopefully um, you know, with the scientific community working on these things, um, we will have some progress on that in the next few years. But now with the spider that was named after you, when you discover new scorpion species, is there a possibility that you're going to have a scorpion species named after you as well? Are you allowed to say, listen, I found this, nobody else knows about it, so I'm just going to call it Yenechtechai <laughs> or something like that. Yes, name it after yeah, myself, so... what the heck? <laughs> so so it's a very good question and, and people ask me that all the time they say oh so you discovered this new species are you going to name it after yourself mm -hmm. and um there's kind of an unwritten rule that you never name something after yourself that oh. that would just take the the egotism a little bit too far <laughs> <laughs> you get but, your friend um, to phone in going i'm just asking for a friend we found this yeah. <laughs> you know, who can i name it after i wonder yes you yes, there's, yeah. a, there's a thought for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So typically, um, typically people name species after someone who's done um, a significant amount of research okay. on a particular group, who's made a you know made a real contribution to the mm -hmm. field, um, or they'll name it after someone who you know somebody special you know who's assisted them in their work or um, or something like that. But um, I do know of someone who named the species after his dog. Um, because the the dog had kept him company through his research project. And fair, so. fair, 
fair enough. Now, I ask every author this question, uh, and I'm talking authors of novels, but there's no reason why I shouldn't ask it of you, because your picture is on the back of this book. Um, not everybody does that. Um, right. So could, might I find you in a bookstore with this book in your hand, looking around to see if anybody's watching you going, oh, look, there's a book by Ian Engelbrecht. <laughs> And I know that he's an expert on, on scorpions. I think I should buy this. <laughs> Are you one of those authors? Um, yeah, so so <laughs> people have asked if anyone's come up to me in a restaurant and asked for a signature yet. And um, that, that hasn't happened. You know, I think um, fame and glory for scorpion books might <laughs> still be a little bit far on the horizon. But um, yeah, I mean, so so for me personally, the 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 whole the whole goal of writing this book was to get the information out mm. there, you know. So so for for many many years now, um, we've had I've had people saying to me, "Is there a book? You know, is there somewhere where I can go to get all the information?" Um, before that, the information was kind of scattered across these. Um, you know, disparate tax and you know scientific publications, yeah. very inaccessible, um, and and people are interested. You know, so so we actually have a Scorpion WhatsApp group with about eighty people um, who are all interested and wanting to learn. Um, and and this was kind of you know the whole goal here was to basically put this all out there. Now now anyone in the country can be a Scorpion expert. You know, if you okay, can... good because this covers all the Scorpions and all the all areas the that they live. Yes. In. But yes, now yes. with that in mind, like like the Cecil Bird app um, on a phone, and there are others, the butterfly apps and a variety, does this have an app attached or is that something for the future? Um, there's no app attached uh, to it presently. Um, there may be in future. Okay. Um, there is an electronic version of the book that's available as well for people who don't want to be carrying okay. a physical copy around yeah. with them. Um, but yeah, possibly in future we'll have an app too. How many species are described in this book, Ian? Um, it's 108. So um, that's, you know, that's a big number for, it for is. most people who, who, you know, think we might have a handful of scorpion species. But I mean, we, we the, the, that, that number of species is also um, dramatic for one country. You know, mm. South Africa has the, the third highest diversity of scorpions in the world. Um, we've got, there's one, I tell people, there's one farm in the Northern Cape that has the same number of scorpions as the whole of Zambia. Um, wow. so, that's yeah, impressive. We, <laughs> yeah. does, does that we, farmer, does that farmer have a scorpion named after him? He, <laughs> he doesn't. He, he, doesn't. Have. <laughs> he should have. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so we really do have incredible diversity. Um, and, um, yeah, and it's all covered there. Um, it, it, w with that book, you can identify most scorpions that occur in our neighboring countries as well, mm -hmm. uh, with the exception of Namibia. Namibia also has um, a very high scorpion diversity and very different to South Africa. Now, um, you mentioned we were only third on the list of number of species. Don't tell me Australia is up there at number <laughs> one, because they've got everything else that bites and stings and can kill you. Yes. Snakes and yeah. spiders. Yeah, so Australia really bites the dust when it comes to scorpions. Yay. So, um, <laughs> so they, 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 they don't have very many species uh, compared to what we've got, um, you know, so, uh, compared to the size of the country. So the, yeah. the size of the country is also really important. Um, but uh, so, yeah, so their scorpion diversity is really poor and they, they don't have any ven dangerously venomous scorpion species. So okay. everything else in Australia will try to get you, but the scorpions <laughs> not. Well. Yeah. Did do you have? I suppose you know it's like you you ask a parent, do you have a favorite child? Do you have a favorite species <laughs> that 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 you sort of when when you put it into the book, you thought I'm going to take extra care photographing this because this is my favorite, and I want yeah. people to know that. Mm. Um, yeah, it's it's a difficult um, question to answer. I, I think in terms of a broader group of scorpions, the burrowing scorpions are definitely mm. my favorite. They're just they're just so diverse and so ecologically fascinating. Um, but um, if I had to pick a single species, it would probably be the hairy thick tail scorpion, um, Parabuthus velosus. 
Okay. Um, they are just amazing animals. It's um, it's the only species of scorpion in the world that's truly diurnal. So um, okay. people, if you if you go on a on a on like a four by four tour through the Richtersfeld or something like that, you see these things crossing the road during the day. Um, wow. They're incredibly hard to find. I mean, we, um, you know, I I, I um, really struggled. So that it's a big black scorpion. It's got this red hair all over it. Um, <laughs> Looks like a local, biker from Mad Max. Yeah, yeah. The the locals call them the Bobbyan Spinnerkop. Uh, and the Bobbyans uh, Scarpion, sorry, mm. because um, because of what they look like, and they've just got great attitude. I mean, they're 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 potently venomous, but they're also quite placid, actually. You know, they're, okay. they're not out there to sting you, but um, yeah, they're very. They will impressive. protect themselves, basically. Yes, yes. But now, with with that in mind, have have you been out on a field trip with? I take it you don't go alone. You've got a group of maybe researchers with you, or people that are, are helping. And all of a sudden, from out in the middle of the felt, they hear Ian scream. <laughs> and it's not because he's been stung, but it's because he's found something that he's been waiting, I don't know, 10 years to discover. And you you stumbled upon it purely by accident. You moved a rock, and there was the scorpion that you've been waiting a decade to find. And if yeah. that is, if my assumption is correct, what was it? Sure. Um, so that's happened um, on a number of occasions, um, but I think um, one of the one of the stories that jumps uh, to mind was um, when I was on a trip in the Richtersfeld, and there was a, a there's a species of scorpion that occurs up in that part of the Northern Cape, which I'd basically given up on. I'd, I'd kind of like thought to myself this you know i'm just not going to get this thing right um and, and i'm probably going to have to photograph a dead museum specimen <laughs> god forbid um and put it in my book you know <laughs> and um and a friend of mine so a friend of mine was on the hillside and he said to me he called me he said you know i've got something under the rock here and 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 my heart just said like you know, I, I didn't know they were there. I didn't know we were in the right area, but something inside just said to me, this is it. And, um, and I said, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to hope too much. And, um, and we dug the scorpion out and it was an adult male of, um, of the species. And I was just over the moon. So. Now, once, once you found something like that, and I can understand your feeling, I waited 53 years to find a pangolin in the wild. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and, and then exactly. afterwards, I went I went back to the lodge. My wife hadn't joined me. I said, you'll never guess what I found. She went, you found a pangolin. And it was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Now, but then for me, and I'm going to ask you the same question as we sort of wind down here today. Um, it was like, what comes next? After 53 years as number one on my yeah. bucket list of things to see, I've now seen it. Yes. So what what you know it's almost anticlimactic. And was it like that for you with this particular scorpion? You've gone, I've waited um, so long and now I've seen it. And was it a big deal? Yes. Yeah. But now it's over, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a big deal. Um, you know, we we managed to find several actually um over the okay. we were we were there for three nights and we got several specimens and it was just, you know, it was a like a scorpion party, really. And um and um and the thing is is that there are still you know um there are still so 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 there's one scorpion species that i haven't seen yet okay. um myself and and i've also i've tried extensively to try and get it I, I relied on other people to get specimens of that for the book but um but yeah i mean there, there are you know there are enough scorpion species out there to keep me busy for quite a while um, and I haven't seen a pangolin. So ah, okay. <laughs> the only thing my wife said to me is the moment I told her, she said, where are you putting the tattoo? And she yeah. knew. <laughs> the book is called Field Guide to Scorpions of South Africa. It's by Ian Engelbrecht. It's published by Strake Nature. Always put out good works. Great field guides. Um, good to have in our, in our home uh, library. Ian, I'm assuming that it's available at most of the bookstores and online you did mention it is available as an electronic book as well yes yeah great stuff once again Good. the book is field guide to scorpions of south africa published by straight and written by ian engelbrecht ian thank you so very much for joining me on in conversation with today thank you so much david